Hello, I'm Vine and today I have for you a build that is basically a tourist trap. Yes, it's a leisure and recreation agency with full migration focus. And before we start, a disclaimer. Migration aspect of this build gave me a real emotional roller coaster here, because the Xeno Outreach Agency holding which I ignored until now, gives plus 25 immigration pull and can be stacked indefinitely, at least in theory. That means every other immigration pull bonus in this build is optional, because we can just use only Xeno outreach agencies and have absolute insane immigration pull. The catch here is the migration itself. Don't get me wrong, positive migration is always good, we can also maximize it by having excessive housing, available jobs and high stability. But there is a reason why almost every experienced player just ignores migration. Calculated pop growth bonus from it really depends on the state of all planets in the given migration sphere. So, if your clients have attractive developing planets themselves, this bonus will be low regardless of your immigration pool. But on the other hand, it will also grow with a number of planets producing unemployed pops or with stunted planetary growth. So yeah, we can get a pop growth bonus ranging from plus 0.03 to plus 30 and this is beyond our control. Who wanna hear about an empire which relies on it to get a pop growth edge? I can't hear your answer, so I'm gonna tell you anyway, starting with the empire creation screen. The only thing that we actually need here is any degree of xenophile ethics, and that's only for edict access later on. Even the nomadic trait is negligible here, as it will fade away with other Xeno species populating our empire. So, that means we can use other options for flavor, roleplay and to fool around. So, I've chosen corporate hedonism to give all pops decadent lifestyle living standards. Yes, Taco Tuesdays and Fruit Fridays included in the deal. That will give them plus 20% happiness and will nudge us to build hyper entertainment forums on every planet. Since entertainers are now also increasing pop growth and produce trade value if we have a counselor for them. As for the second one, I've got mutagenic spas to provide invigorating baths in toxic waste at the industrial planets. Perfect tourist attraction with happiness penalty that is completely completely negligible because of the happiness bonus from decadent lifestyle. But as I said, that's only an optional mix. If you have anything else in mind, you can go with it. Now, let's talk about key immigration pool bonuses in the game. First of all to mention are Xeno Outreach Agency and Executive Retreat Holdings. Both are special tier 3 tech holdings that can be obtained by any megacorp. First one provides plus 25% immigration pool on every planet and it's essential for this build. The other gives plus 10% empire amenities, making entertainers output even greater. Next is the ascension pack and that's Xeno compatibility, giving us plus 33% immigration pool. But it's optional due to the existence of Xeno outreach agencies and a tendency to occasionally burn the CPU of our PCs. Then we get the Land of Opportunity Edict, giving us another plus 100% immigration pool and plus 25% pop growth from immigration. 
The latter bonus is much more valuable here as it is applied at the end of migration pop growth calculation, increasing its effects significantly. Still optional, but with very good synergy. Same could be said about the open arms agenda that gives us plus 5 to plus 20 percent pop growth from immigration, but as all agendas, that's only a temporary bonus. The last one is the Distribute Luxury Goods Planet decision. Spam it whenever you can as it gives plus 25% amenities and plus 25% immigration pool for 10 years on any given planet. With this we should have positive migration at all times that will only grow over time when, when empires that we have migration access with will develop their planets sufficiently. Also, did you notice there that I didn't mention Mega Corporation Authority as a requirement for this build? That's because since migration is better later in the game, we can use other compatible builds in the early game like the Tech Rush variant of Maximum Pop Growth build. And now, before I sink any deeper in build switching scenarios, it's time for evaluation. In multiplayer, it's maybe. In general, builds that start to shine in the mid-game are not good in multi, especially the ones that synergize with Xeno compatibility pack. But this is a very flexible Megacorp build and all meta Megacorp plays and misplays still apply to it. In single player, it's pop stealing. In addition to having Inkrom from branch offices, you will also increase pop growth when the rest of the galaxy starts to struggle with it. Yeah, that's a winning strategy in single. As for roleplay, you are a travel agency. All aboard the transport ship, you will have the trip of your lifetime. Days on sunny beaches, evening in invigorating spas and a nights at luxurious hotels. All of that with other lavish comforts. And if you wanna extend your stay, you can do it indefinitely as long as you pay or work for it. Anyway, what do you think about this build? Write your opinion in the comments and remember to check out the community tab to vote on the next Stellaris build. See you later!